Corporal Nathan Justice, a husband, father, soldier, and a Christian leader. Born in Dauphin, Manitoba, raised there as well. He has served eight years in the Canadian Armed Forces. He's been on two combat tours in Afghanistan. The path of the warrior has been life-changing for Nathan, and he's eager to share the spiritual lessons from the front lines. Nathan, welcome. Hi. We have a peace lily for you today in uh, appreciation for all that you've committed and sacrificed to serve your country and to serve people of Afghanistan uh, with the goal of, of peace ultimately. Um, how, how do you feel about this decision to pull the troops, both American and Canadian, coming home? Um, what do you think? Well, it definitely feels good to pull our men and women back home to the safety of Canada, wherever wherever they are in the world. It, it feels good, but uh, as a soldier uh, with experience, I know that it's only temporary. I know there's always, unfortunately, going to be another place for our men and women to serve and do the job that they're trained to do, protect the freedoms and interests of, of our Can Canadian society. Mm. You've got a brother heading out? I got a brother that's gearing up to go uh, to Afghanistan, but he's going to be running I believe, anyway, more of a, a training aspect of uh, the mission, training the local authorities to take over in Afghanistan so they can keep the peace uh, in our absence because that's ultimately the goal to, uh, to maintain a peaceful environment in Afghanistan for the people. What's your brother's name? My brother's name is Jairus Justice. And he's even younger than you He's are. even younger than me. He's in his early 20s, 22, I believe. Oh, having read your book, uh just just to watch a news report and to see these young men and once you get all that equipment off and we we see how fresh and how young you are uh, this is the, the the path here is full of violence uh, full of loss yes, you, it is. you lost first tour two friends first tour I lost uh, two friends uh, Paul Davis and Tim Wilson I was in a I was in a uh, accident with them, and I uh, actually survived the accident, and uh, they didn't. And I, it opened a whole lot of questions for me as as a human being, and uh, it actually that experience, as well as some other things, uh, led to me becoming to know Jesus Christ as my own my own savior. Mm. Indeed, this journey has been a catalyst in oh, your yeah. spiritual life. You know what survivor's guilt is about, don't you? Yeah, I do. I know what survivor's guilt is about. And, uh, you know, I've, I, I struggled for, for a long time, even as a Christian, with, uh, with some of these issues, like survivor's guilt and, you know, post-traumatic stress and all that stuff. And, and uh, God has used those experiences in my life to, to bring uh, to surface some of the defects of character in my life that I didn't even know I had and, and bring a real deep authentic healing to my life and uh, I look at my life today and I can't believe it I have a wife and a, and a son and another baby on the way and uh, every day I'm just grateful that God cares so much about me that he would use uh, even the most tragic experiences in my life to bring a healing to me well, let's uh, find out what needed healing. Uh, All right. You're pretty vulnerable yeah. here. Um, you were a hard partying military guy. Yes, I was. Like many military guys, unfortunately, I was. I like to uh, have a good time, but more than that, it was. I had uh, deep issues that I hid behind insecurities, fears, doubts, and too often that that uh, partying is a cover up for a lot of hidden hidden. Uh, hidden faults and hidden uh, fears and insecurities and and uh, you know I would drink alcohol and everything like that to to I don't know become this other person mm -hmm. and uh, this person I wanted to portray to the world this person that you know nothing phased kind of thing but on the inside I was hurting and lost and empty and I needed a savior. Mm -hmm. Wow I uh some of these pages are, read like a James Bond movie. Uh, you, you're lost in Bangkok, somebody has drugged you, and it is absolutely bizarre. <laughs> it is. You, you probably don't know to this day what actually happened. No, I don't, and, and you know, it's, those are just some of the, 
the consequences that you know some of my life choices had taken me, and I was in bad situations at at bad times, and uh, and I was a I was I was a lost person. Interesting that seeds were being planted in your soul. Yeah. Through the mail. Yeah. Before this really bottomed out. Tell well, us about that. and that's the thing too. I mean, uh, a lot of people ask me how can how can we support the troops? We want to support the troops. The Canadian public loves the troops, even mm -hmm. if they don't agree with the mission yes. or the cause. They they support the troops, men and women in uniform. We have nothing to complain about there. But um, one of the best things that anybody could give you is a relationship or an, an introduction to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so what happened is my father's church. Uh, started sending me books and and uh, letters and all kinds of things and prayers in the mail and I would read those things and uh, so these seeds were getting planted and then these experiences would happen these traumatic experiences and and it would make me question all the things and then I would get the answers from these books in the mail really so it was connecting it was for you. connecting for me in this weird uh, kind of way that I didn't understand at the time and and uh, it was almost like when I needed help it was there um, and they they were just sending me this stuff and and the Holy Spirit was taking care of the rest and I didn't know all this at the time but God was gonna save me mm. so you you came home after that first tour yeah and that was pretty pivotal yeah it Tell was, us about your church connection. It was pivotal. I started going to a, a church uh, called Bethel, Bethel Christian Assembly in Brandon, Manitoba, and I started sitting in the back row so nobody would see me. And uh, you were intrigued by the pastor. Yeah. You, you'd heard yeah. him before. I heard him before. He was kind of a you know both there there two pastors one in the evening one in the morning. I saw the evening one more because I was out partying the night before, so I I didn't make it to the morning service a lot of times, but. Uh, both of these pastors, uh, Pastor Mike Davis and Pastor Len Smith, they were both just a riot on, you know, and I, I, I really appreciated how real they could be, but also how funny they could be, and these guys were having a good time up there, and, uh, and it intrigued me because I thought the Christian life was some kind of boring, like, liturgical uh, thing that I had to live, but these guys were having fun. And, and you got invited to a young adult prayer group. Yeah, I did get invited to a young adult prayer group, and... Now, the, now, what was the appeal there? The, the fact that it was young adults or the people inviting you? Well, here's the interesting thing is I, this, I tried to escape from church one Sunday and how I got invited to this group was I got introduced to the young adult leaders and at the time I had no idea that the, the woman young adult leader would be my wife and the man young ad adult leader, he's now a pastor at the church, Pastor Mike Sitko, he would uh, become my best man at my wedding. <laughs> so I didn't have a clue at that time. God was writing a wonderful story. November yeah. 10th, 2007, you call it the best day of your life. Yeah. We have a picture of your family, family photo. Uh, you tell us your wife's name. Her name is Anna uh, uh, People call Most people call her Anna, and my son's name is Judah. How old is Judah today? He is 19 months old. 19 months old and a baby on the way. And a baby on the way. Absolutely wonderful. Now, here's where our hearts go out. Um, was it just two months after your wedding? You were shipped out again Two months after my wedding, I was shipped out again. For seven months. Yeah, away. brand new Christian, brand new husband, and uh, went back on another tour. 